Hey, everybody. Welcome to Locked on Badgers. Another fantastic guest today. We got John Garcia, Director of Recruiting at Sports Illustrated. We're going to get into Tyler Jancy, and we're going to get a little bit into the secret sauce at Wisconsin with the walk-on department and how that gives the Badgers maybe a unique advantage in the college football world. All that and more on today's Locked on Badgers. You are Locked on Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Thank you again for making Locked On Badgers your first listen every day, free and available wherever you get podcasts. This is the place to find all your Wisconsin Badgers news, notes, everything going on with the college football landscape in relation to the Badgers. Also, today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. As promised, another fantastic guest today. We're super excited to get into it with John Garcia, Recruiting Director for Sports Illustrated. We're going to bring him in right now. Sir, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Ryan. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a unique uh, fan base to dig into, and I, and I can't wait to continue to learn more about the Badgers as we talk about them. That's, that's what makes this great. No, we really appreciate the time, too. Uh, we're we're going to kick off the show with Wisconsin's off to a slow start in this recruiting cycle, but we do have a linebacker, three-star Tyler Jancy out of Illinois. Um, what can you tell us about his game, kind of how it translates to the next level? Yeah, real quick on the slow start front, I mean, you're not alone there. Uh, a lot of schools with roster management, hurdles, the portal, numbers, and spring ball going on, a lot of schools are in single digits with commit. So don't, don't fret too early, Badger fans. But, you know, with Tyler, there's a lot to like about this linebacker from Illinois. I mean, he's he's a feisty cat. I mean, you watch his tape and he is downhill. We, we call it screaming downhill in the evaluation game. I mean, he does not need to see much to go all in uh, on the B gap or whatever his assignment is relative to the play. So a scrappy downhill linebacker is what you see initially on tape but then as you watch more of it you see the football iq you see the t the chances that he's willing to take as a tackler which is not something we talk enough about in the evaluation business it's easy to go hey he's a sideline to sideline player he's good and covers da, da, da. and tyler has those things you know at his disposal he won uh, a linebacker mvp at a regional camp for his coverage skills even though on tape you, you really don't see a whole lot of it because he's so good downhill against the run, both against running backs and against the passer. But where you see his football IQ come into focus a little bit is in some of the situational plays that he shows on tape. I mean, there was like a fourth and one play that I saw this morning where he lines up immediately behind the defensive tackle. So I'm talking like his hip is, is near his defensive tackle's hip basically daring the running back to pick the other gap. And it's something he anticipated because on the snap of the football, of course, the running back redirects and Tyler redirected first right in the hole for, for a fourth and one stop. So there is some savvy to his game, not just a physical aggression and explosiveness that is so easy to see. So you talk about a fit at, at Wisconsin, you think of that program, you think of aggressive defense, you think of the linebacker position in particular. Uh, so I think Tyler is a great fit and a great early get to kick off this 23 cycle. Hey, let me, let me ask you where you fall on this. Um, so Tyler's a guy, Wisconsin has traditionally been a program that really trusts their board. They trust their evaluation. They they don't wait for a kid to necessarily blow up offer-wise. Still, do you does it give you pause when you see a guy coming in that maybe has very little other Power 5 offers? The, the, you know, this kid does not have a, a Penn State offer, a Notre Dame offer, a Michigan offer, right? Does it start to give you pause? Do you look at the film again with uh, maybe a different lens? No, you said it, Ryan. You have to trust your evaluation in this business. The, the college coaches that call me and say, hey, who else has offered this kid? Those are not coaches at winning programs most of the time. And I think that's for a reason, because they're worried about looking around at who else has jumped in on this kid. If you like the kid, offer him. If you offer him, go get him on your commitment list. So I, I don't have pause, especially this early in the recruiting cycle. It's just it just is what it is at this point. Look, he's from Illinois. He's he's a bit of an undersized linebacker who is a run dominant player as far as he's presenting at this point. So those traits might turn a, a few programs off without a deeper look at, at Tyler's game. But when you do take that deeper look, you do see that he's got some three down ability. He's got some pass rushing ability as a very, very well informed blitzer as well. So there's a lot of different ways to utilize a guy like that, even though he presents as kind of an old school first and second down type linebacker. So I, I'm always in the trust your own evaluation camp. All the teams that have won national titles in the last, I don't know, decade, 
they all trust it. You know, I've mm-hmm. seen Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State be the first scholarship offer, period, for a recruit. You know, you talk about trusting it, that that's trusting your own evaluation. So the schools that look around are typically the ones that are are changing coaching staffs every few years. And I think there's a reason for that. So I love how how Wisconsin operates. And I know we'll talk about that more later, but you have to trust your evaluation in this business. There's there's no other way to do it. You know your system better than anybody. So if you see a guy that fits, you got to go get him. Right. And, and, you know, the other thing with this is there's certain programs and you could probably name more nationally than I could that have benefit of the doubt at certain positions. Right. You know, um, running back, quarterback, whatever it is, you know, Alabama is becoming that a receiver. But Wisconsin, right. the way they put linebackers into the league, I think this is also one of those spots where you just got to trust. They, they have earned that benefit of the doubt there regardless. You know, and I don't know if does that factor when you look at recruiting with when a certain program offers certain positions with their history and their success at those areas. Absolutely. How could you not? You know, we, we like to say everything is a data point in our business in terms of us evaluating and trying to rank kids and all that fun stuff. You have to take that into consideration. If if Ohio State or Alabama, like you said, offers a wide receiver, you should probably take a closer look. Right. LSU, Florida, traditionally with the mm-hmm. DBU staple, you have to look into that just a little bit more. You know, so I, I think those things do matter um, in, in recruiting. And I think for Wisconsin, yeah, it would probably be linebacker first, Iowa with defensive backs. You know, there's mm-hmm. certain teams and positions that you just have to kind of keep an eye on. And I think uh, that that is certainly one of them with Wisconsin at the linebacker position, really the whole front seven because of how they've operated over over the long standing period of time. And and maybe running backs creeping up there for, for Wisconsin a little bit too with the success that some of these young backs have had. What about um, early? Is this a guy that you look at and he needs a couple years in a program or is this somebody who can step in and play pretty quickly, do you think? Tyler Jancy. Yeah, I mean, he's, Tyler's listed, what, like 215 or so right now, which is which is great. That's where you want your linebackers at as a high school junior. It's not something that that is going to be a, a whole lot of weight to put on because nowadays you're playing at 230, 235, uh, in, even in the Big Ten, which is, you know, conventionally thought of as a powerful run first type of league, even though all of that has, has begun to change. So, yeah, I think adding 20 pounds over an 18 month stretch is, is not a lot to ask of a division one scholarship linebacker. So I think he's right about physically where you want. I mentioned the IQ earlier, you know, he's the captain of, of his own defense there as an underclassman. So I think he has a lot of traits to play relatively early, but I'd have to probably dig into the depth chart and, and mm-hmm. see how things shake out after this season, like we do for most programs. But I think physically he could be on track to play as an underclassman. Absolutely. All right, so last question. I want to wrap up on Tyler Jancy. He's currently, uh, again, looking at most recruiting services, kind of a mid-three, maybe a little higher mid-three star guy. Uh, feel pretty accurate, that that kind of initial recruiting ranking? Yeah, look, I mean, let's let's be honest. A lot of, a lot of these websites and outlets uh, go relative to the offer. So Wisconsin, I believe, was his first Power 5 mm-hmm. offer and may still be the only one, and then he committed. So that can kind of mask the ceiling uh, relative to what other colleges, quote-unquote, think about a recruit but if a a linebacker from the midwest is committed to wisconsin they're probably done with recruiting so i don't think you're going to see a whole lot of added interest from college programs so i do think the offer list sometimes reflects where where the star ranking might be so i I don't read into it as much look there's a ton of three stars in the nfl um the industry is talking about shrinking the four star pool overall anyway so the way I always try to present it is if there's at least three stars there, it means there's the potential to to develop into a college starter and eventually a guy who has a shot at the NFL. And I don't know what, what more you could ask for uh, as a college football fan of any team. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right, guys, we're going to continue this, this awesome conversation with John coming up. We're going to get a little bit into what I think is a bit of the secret sauce at Wisconsin with, with recruiting and player development. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to us by Built Bar. Built Bar continues to be Really one of my favorite tools in my fitness journey. They've built a community around uh, healthy eating and something that you can you can feel good about. You're not forcing yourself to eat something that tastes like cardboard or chalk. Built Bar has this incredible variety of flavors. If you get the variety pack, you get 12 different flavors. Cinnamon churro, mint brownie, coconut cream, the entire gambit. They're phenomenal tasting. It tastes like candy bars. Every Built Bar has 17 or more grams of, of protein, low amounts of sugar. They're lifestyle friendly. It's something you, again, you throw it in your backpack, you go to the gym, and it gives you that fuel to sustain what you're trying to do. It's a community they built around trying to help people on their fitness journeys. Um, if you go to Build Bar, scroll down, you can they have a macro chart, so you can kind of line up what your nutritional goals are, and they help align 
kind of uh, their products to you, give you a really good base and a really easy way to continue getting healthier, feeling better. And that's what it's all about, feeling better inside your own body. Um, go to Built Bar, go use our offer code LOCK15, get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your order. Uh, get started today. You will not regret it. Also today, guys, a uh, big announcement coming up. The NFL Draft is coming up, obviously, April 28th. Tune into Locked On NFL Draft. Uh, it's our coverage of the 2022 NFL Draft. Three days of real-time analysis from our extensive lineup of experts and insiders. It's everyone that you need to know about full mock on uh, full mock drafts, you know, uh, Locked On Live NFL Draft. It's on our draft YouTube page as well. That's April 28th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, this is the time to do it. Let's start getting smarter with the NFL Draft. Set your calendars for that. All right, guys, we're going to jump back into our conversation with John, uh, bring him back into the show. This is really something I'm excited to talk to you about because I think that there is a – I don't want to say um, people don't talk about this enough, but Wisconsin has had one of the most consistent winning programs in the last 20, 25 years. They haven't had the ceiling that in Alabama or Georgia or Ohio State, obviously, but they don't have losing seasons. They never really have a bad year. And I think part of the secret sauce on that is they have a walk-on program that is absolutely – incredible you know jj watt was a walk-on jared Everdaris, alec alex erickson nfl receivers um ryan ramchek a first round offensive lineman you know they have four or five we went on a previous show they have four or five walk-ons in this year's team that are going to be in the two deeper starting is there any other program and i haven't done the research that's why you're here you're the you're the smart guy here <laughs> is there another program that does this that has this type of success with a walk-on not that we hear about. Uh, it's usually a spot kind of situation, right? This one guy, oh, this one walk-on. Wow, what a great story. He became a starter, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Stetson Bennett, right? He's like the poster child for, yep. for walk-ons at, at, at this moment uh, at Georgia. But that's really it. You know, we hear about it very rarely, um, you know, unless a guy gets a scholarship offer and it's a dramatic video on social media that we all love. Uh, those are really the two moments where we hear about it. But collectively, um, even just the names you listed, at Wisconsin, it's kind of ridiculous. But it kind of goes back to, to what you said earlier about trusting your evaluation. That is certainly the front end of, of the, the walk-on and preferred walk-on spectrum. But here's what I like about Wisconsin's operations of it. Roster management right now, Ryan, is the biggest complaint. It's not the portal. It's the roster management. It's the biggest complaint and the biggest issue that every single collegiate head coach and really football department is dealing with. The scholarship number has not changed from 85. Mm -hmm. That is still the limit. Uh, and every other factor that the NCAA has opened up of late, transfer portal, NIL, all of that, the pandemic year of eligibility that everyone is still taking advantage of, depending on the roster, all of those things detract from that, that 85 number, uh, that scholarship limit. So every coach I talk to is like, man, we got to figure out how to get down to 85. There are big time schools and, and you could just literally watch the transfer portal the next two weeks. There are big time schools that will have to basically cut recruits right. or cut players. Excuse me. They'll have to cut players on the current roster because they have to get down to 85 because now that that summer enrolling group of recruits is going to be entering the program. So you're going to have to get down to 85 ahead of the 22 season and, and it's going to be very difficult. So if you can navigate any way, shape or form to either bring in a kid as a walk on or extend him as a gray shirt. Maybe he starts a semester late the following January. Any way to navigate that process a little bit more smoothly is something that is very hard to do because these are kids. These are these are kids who think they're going to go into college a certain way and you're presenting something different. So it, it takes a secondary recruiting pitch, not only to say, hey, we want you at Wisconsin, but now we also want you to come in as a PWO right. and here's why. So it's it's a whole different sales pitch. It's a whole different package to present not only to recruits, but to their high school coaches, to their parents, et cetera. And I think that's why it's so uncommon because especially in this day and age, it's really hard to sell that in the day and age of player empowerment, NIL, fluidity, all of these things that really are for the player, PWOs are really for the program. So it, it takes a special kid to buy into that as well. So it's, it's fascinating for lack of a better term. Yeah, and it's something, it's really interesting when you dive into it more. It's something Wisconsin has now cultivated because now they can sell to other walk-ons, look at the success we've had, right? You know, they, in this class alone, they have a 6'6 defensive end walking on from uh, Colorado, right? They had a guy committed from Washington who ended up flipping back to Washington. But so they almost do this secondary walk-on recruitment nationwide. 
one of their start probably starting safeties this year was a walk on from California who had a Cal offer and chose to walk on at Wisconsin. You know, I just think it gives Wisconsin such a unique advantage. You look at a school like Iowa. Let's use Iowa for example. Iowa, there's less Division One talent typically in Iowa than Wisconsin, and sure. Iowa shares the state with Iowa State. That's that's kind of the the interesting part with Wisconsin is there's no Division II school, there's no other D1 school in Wisconsin, so a lot of these walk-ons are Wisconsin kids who want to play at Wisconsin, and they just don't really have an alternative. And it, it just creates this this really interesting benefit where they get eight to 10, 12 extra you know quality players every year. Two or three of those pan out, and over the course of four or five years, it's almost like another recruiting class. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great point uh, to, to, to point out geographically, right? Um, I, I didn't even think about the lack of, of other programs in the state, but obviously Wisconsin's the flagship, right? So, mm -hmm. so I think even with a couple extra ones, kids would want to play uh, play for the Badgers. But yeah, I think that has to do with with walk-ons in general. You're going into areas or situations where something funky has happened, either teams don't recruit that area and there's still really good talent or something crazy happens like a transfer, maybe something academically. And it, it kind of keeps a kid under the radar, even though maybe his talent says otherwise. So again, it, it goes back to your original point, trusting your evaluation. If you're a program and you like a guy, go get him. But if you can get him as a walk on, obviously it, it's a business at the end of the day. Uh, but the precedent Wisconsin has set, you know, recruiting is like law. If you got precedent mm -hmm. set, it's just much easier to, to win that next case. Uh, and, and like you said, as, as I'm learning more as we go, uh, Wisconsin's PWO precedent is, is as good as it gets. Hey, I, I kind of want to ask you this. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here, but what's the biggest issue with Wisconsin nationally? Just in from a recruiting standpoint, is there just something they're not going to be able to overcome? I wouldn't go that far and say they're not being going to be able to overcome it. But I think perceptionally, nationally, people view Wisconsin as a defensive first conservative offensive kind of team, which uh, I think the Big Ten has not helped, you know, with some of the that perception outside of, of the Midwestern footprint. Uh, so I think that does hurt Wisconsin with quarterback recruiting, skill position recruiting, particularly wide receiver uh, on the offensive side of the football. But that's perception. You know, I, I do think perception is very important in recruiting because, again, we're talking all this. All this mm -hmm. is great. And we're talking about 17 year old kids. Right. That are that are having to deal with this. So if adults have this national perception, imagine what's getting filtered down to a 17, 18 year old kids. So I do think that matters. Um, but I do think Wisconsin has the pieces to potentially push against some of that perception. That's why I say there's there's it's not something that Wisconsin cannot overcome. We've seen them at the top of the Big Ten time and time again. We've seen them upset teams without that perception mm -hmm. time and time again. So I think the the stability and steadiness of Wisconsin will continue to allow them to recruit beyond that that Big Ten footprint relatively successfully. You know, they've always done well in my home state of Florida. They've always come down south and and contended for for big time recruits and now they're working a little bit more out west as well so i do think that the, the the positive perception overall outweighs maybe the negative of hey maybe this is a conservative offense that isn't going to be as explosive as as some others how long do you think that takes to change I, I would, let me let me rephrase it in a better way if you if you string a couple of good offensive years together like that doesn't change the perception completely right you you need to really over the course of five, 10 years. I'm just, it's weird to me because I, and the reason I ask this is I still see people talk about Nebraska as, you know, a regional power, a lot of recruiting sway because of what they've done in the past. You know, how long do perceptions last? How long does that change? Depends who's talking, right? If it's, if it's a high school coach, maybe a parent. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just like I work for Sports Illustrated. You talk to, to high school coaches and parents and they're like, oh my goodness, thank you so much for talking to my son. And I talk to a recruit and they're like, Sports Illustrated coverage recruiting? <laughs> so it, it really it really has to do with the demographic. Who are you who are you connecting with for, for that perception? And I think again, going to that teenage uh, demographic, it really takes one year for me, one player even can change the perception of of an entire school if it breaks the right way. So I, I think that, you know, maybe the adults will, will slow it down because they think Nebraska and Tennessee uh, and Oklahoma are, are some of the biggest blue bloods in the country, which is not necessarily true at this very moment. Um, but for the kids themselves who, who ultimately have the final call, you know, I do think it can change in very short order. I mean, there are kids in Florida I talk to that like don't know that Miami was a powerhouse, you know, back in the day. They, they don't understand 
the pipeline that the Hurricanes had not that long ago. So it really it humbles you and makes you feel old, but sure. it really does show you how quickly things can change um, in recruiting. You know, these kids are very impressionable. Not all of them are diehard football fans like we are that have, have been in it their whole lives. A lot of them are, are using it as a business decision. Hey, I started playing football in ninth grade. Coaches think I'm good at it. So now I'm taking a look at what college football looks like. So you're talking a two to three year sample before a kid makes a decision at, at the most at times. So I think it can change in a very, very small window uh, for any program, really. That's an excellent point because you and I, I mean, we probably watch football our whole lives. I mean, I vividly right. remember those those Miami teams, you know, the talent. Of them. I remember the Nebraska teams in the mid 90s, but that's a really good point where a lot of kids, they're not into it like at that level. So it, it is more of a business decision. Given Wisconsin fans hope that we can turn this around on the offensive side. I love it, John. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we have one more segment with John, who's been so gracious with his time coming up. First, we're going to get into uh, the last sponsor of the show, Bet Online. We talk about it all the time. Bet Online is your go to source for all your sports betting needs and, frankly, all your sports needs, podcasts, news, where the next coach is going. You know, and it's not just sports betting. Uh, Bet Online has all your, your Vegas games, roulette, blackjack, and it's also a place where you can really get into early action. They have NFL futures up. I know you guys have heard me talk about it. I think Trey Lance is the real deal. You can get the Niners plus 700 to win the NFC. That roster was good enough with Garoppolo last year to almost do it. I think Lance is an upgrade. If you jump to the AFC side, the Bengals are still plus 1,100. If you think that they have another run in them, it's good time to get in early. Uh, NBA playoffs are about to kick off. And then you have baseball starting up too. There's so many opportunities and options, uh, regardless of what sport you're into. And again, you, it's not just gambling and wagering. They have podcast news, the latest on every sport that you're into. Go to Bet Online. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you guys again for making Lockdown Badges your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. Uh, we're going to continue this just awesome discussion with John. Um, and I kind of wanted to, I know this isn't the easiest ask. Uh, I asked you just if you could dig up a little information on going back to our previous conversation on walk ons. And statistically, there's yeah. a trend. Every Wisconsin walk-on class, two or three guys are going to emerge as basically scholarship level or above players. My two dudes in this class, Cam Fain, uh, a 6'2-ish receiver out of uh, Milwaukee, and um, Luna Larson, just a, a heat-seeking missile at linebacker <laughs> out of Baraboo. Um, I'm curious what you were able to, to see on film with those two. Do you think I'm off base in thinking that those guys are just potential steals as, as walk-ons? No, not at all. I, I was shocked, particularly with with uh, Luna. I was like, "What? What am I missing here?" You know, he's got two way ability, all state linebacker as as a junior and as a senior. And and you said it, man, heat seeking missile. This kid, this kid gives you Tebow vibes when you watch him play quarterback at that size. But obviously, the position projection is going to be on defense, where he is just an enforcer, a physical a uh, beast who's who's more physically developed than, than Tyler Jancy, who we talked about mm -hmm. a little bit earlier. You know, you put those two films side by side like I did last night, and you say, well, what, what's the difference here? And I think from an overall football standpoint, you know, I think Luna's got a, a bit of an advantage. Obviously, he's a year older, but he just looks like a grown man uh, playing high school football. And, and I think those are the kind of kids, if you can get them as walk-ons, captain of the team, quarterback, all those extra accolades – uh, just really help them not only to assimilate to your roster that much sooner, uh, but potentially grab a scholarship and, and, and see the two deep or, or beyond before they're done uh, at a school like Wisconsin. And then the re receiver was really interesting to me. You know, he transferred schools a couple of times. He ended up in Texas. Back in Wisconsin, there was some controversy around his name uh, in terms of eligibility. But, you know, some of those things aren't his fault. But when you watch the tape, I mean, 6'2", 6'3", 185 pounds or so, very good after the catch. Mm -hmm. And I think that is something that uh, a, a program, we talked about perception, right? A program like Wisconsin needs guys who can pick them up and put them down and separate from defenders after the catch. Uh, and, and I think that's potentially where, where he could be a fit down the line. He should have a chip on his shoulder relative to how his high school situation worked out. Uh, and he should be mature. He's had to move across the country a couple of times, dealing with some family stuff. So I do think that that, again, fuels you to, to be a little bit more prepared sooner rather than later um, and, and being willing to take a, a risk on yourself, being willing to bet on yourself, which is really what, what walking on anywhere is to a degree. Uh, so I think uh, this PWO legacy at Wisconsin is 
only going to continue. And I appreciate you putting me on to those guys because now I'm going to brag about it going on, going forward. Right. Plant your flag in them early. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. I, tell you, I was looking at Cam Fain, the receiver, and I, I really actually like the group of receivers Wisconsin brought in last cycle, and he fits right in. You know, part of it is there, and this isn't verified, verified. It's not laser time, but he ran, he went to a um, Wisconsin clinic or a camp. He ran a four five with a 38 inch vertical at six, two, you know, even if that those works. numbers, even if those numbers are a little off, right. If he's a four five, five guy in a 35 inch vertical, like, yes, you, you get physical tools like that and you just throw it to the coaches and see what happens in two years, you know, exactly. at that size. And like you said, I was, I love the, after the catch ability with him, like he's sudden. Right. He has a little bit of an extra start stop that a lot of receivers at that level don't have. And a lot of that is natural. That's instinctive. I mean, that comes with experience and that natural ability combining with one another. And and I think that's where Cam could potentially you know, really make an impact soon uh, there at Wisconsin. And like you said, the receiver class is big. Uh, the receiver class is diverse, but he could fit right into that. I mean, who doesn't need a 6'2 guy who can push you vertically, but who could also contend with the intermediate stuff and potentially break a tackle or two and, and go for chunk plays. You know, that's what every offense wants, regardless of scheme and, and even regardless of perception. And I want to finish up with Luna, um, who, who you talked about glowingly. He, he's my favorite walk-on in this class. I, by the way, Wisconsin, this just gets back to what we were talking about earlier. When they have their recruiting videos, you know, every school does their kind of recruit commitment videos differently. They, they put something right. on Twitter. They have a film. They have graphics. Wisconsin does their PWOs the same way they do their scholarship guys. Every PWO gets, awesome. gets like a banner, a graphic, welcome to the program. You know, and again, that just ties into how they sell that. There's, it's really not a difference for their scholarship guys, vice their PWO guys. So I went through all the PWO, PWOs Wisconsin bringing in. Luna is by far my favorite. And I want to touch on something you said about the two-way ability. I love dudes in high school who clearly give a crap about winning. I would say a different Amen. word, but this is a clean podcast. But, like, <laughs> that dude is running people over at quarterback, right? There's there's clips of him on special teams. He's flying around at defense. And I think guys like that who played such a big part in their program success, you take them and you just put them in one position, and a lot of times they're able to just flourish. He's got that crunch time ability already, you know, playing quarterback uh, in high pressure situations. And like you said, he's all over the field flashing no matter where he lines up. You know, so you if, if you're talking about a walk on or a guy who could eventually make an impact, it's a versatile guy and a guy who is willing to do anything and flash in the process at every position that he lines up at. And, and, and that's what we see for, from Luna on tape, uh, in-state kid, all, all the things you talked about earlier that just kind of makes sense for Wisconsin, I think he, he fits right into that mold. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how it works out with uh, the end of the spring and obviously into next year, how some of these guys could could maybe factor in somewhere. We're going to make this an annual uh, John talk about walk-ons, and we'll get you <laughs> on here all the time. Um, everyone, listen, I, I want to thank John for taking all the time to come here. It's been very gracious with this time. Uh, tons of really interesting insights and knowledge. John, where can people find you? Where can they follow you? Yeah, uh, social media uh, at John Garcia underscore JR, just pretty much my name there. And of course, free content on Sports Illustrated, si.com slash college. You'll see all our football and basketball coverage in one spot. All right, guys, thank you so much once again for everyone listening, everyone watching on YouTube for making Lockdown Badgers your first listen every day. Uh, we are free and available, obviously, wherever you get podcasts. You can reach out to the show at Lockdown Badgers on Twitter or Lockdown Badgers at gmail.com. Leave any uh, comments, you know, like, subscribe to the show. It obviously helps. And thank you uh, again for listening. Thank you for John for the time. And now make Locked On NFL Draft your second show of the day. Ryan Tracy and former NFL quarterback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. Also free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks, guys.